could take a seat, please. You know, and, and oftentimes, you know, if, you, if you're wondering, you know, God, God, what did you create me to be? You know, what did you create me to, to do? Can you stay up here, like, with me the whole time? That sounds so nice. Um, <laughs> you know, a, a, a lot of times, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, God, what, what did you put me for? Like, what is my, you know, Keith, Pastor Keith Craft, he shares, you know, about the fingerprint. You know, about pretty much 99% of human DNA is, is identical, but this is this 1% that separates each one of us, our specific anointing, our specific calling. And a lot of times, if you're wondering, you know, what that is, you could look, look back in your life and see where, what were, the, what were the hardest things that you've been through? Where are the moments in your life where, you know, you almost got taken out? You know, where, where you know, it looked like when Jesus went to the cross, it looked good for the devil, right? He, he didn't know he was walking into a trap. And, and a lot of times it's the same thing with us. You know, he tries to take us out. We go through these things in our life that create such trauma, but they become the very thing that God has called us to do. So don't hate those things. Don't look back at them and, and dismiss them. There's value in that. Amen? Amen. I want to talk about stepping out tonight. You know, I, uh, let's see here, time-wise, okay. So I remember, you know, February 20th, 1999, I gave my life to Jesus in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, literally, on the USS Arctic. And a couple months later, I'm floating through the Red Sea, and I was the captain's cook. So I would stand on the bridge of the ship, he'd be in the middle, and I'd be off to his right, just, you know, there, get him whatever he needed. And I would read my Bible, you know, I just got saved a couple months earlier and, you know, I was reading about Moses parting the Red Sea and I'm in the Red Sea. I'm like, this is so cool. And, <laughs> and uh, I, I got word from home that my grandfather had passed away. And um, I, I wasn't super close with him, but, um, you know, we, we would go to the house a lot. And I, I just thought, you know, I was kind of wondering, like, God, where is he, you know? Is he, is he in heaven? Is he in hell? I never really thought about that before until I got saved. You know, I never really thought, man, there's, there's more to this life. There's more than, you know, kind of what I'm experiencing. And, you know, I was just kind of pondering these things. And a few nights later, I just had a dream. And I remember I, I'm kind of walking through the snow. And, and I, I, it was almost like if you see Narnia, right, when they go through the closet in the snow. And, and then they come across kind of these big doors. And these big doors opened. And I, I just, I, I'm immediately captured by like the marble flu. It was like the, I don't know if it was marble, but it was the most beautiful stone I ever saw. And, you know, I just walk in and everything is just things that I see, but I've never seen them nicer. I've never seen them more beautiful. And I'm walking through and there's, there's tables of people eating, you know, like cafeteria style, but it was nice. You know, and, and, I, and I'm walking and I'm walking, you know, you don't think of nice cafeterias, right? But it was nice. So I'm walking through, you know, so people, you know, back here, people's backs here, and I'm walking, and I catch eyes with, a, with an individual. It was my grandfather. And we just caught eyes, and in the dream, he spoke to me, but it was like telepathically, right? We, he, he wasn't talking, but I was hearing him, and I didn't say anything, but he had just communicated, Jeff, like if, if I only understood how real you know, eternity was and how real I would have lived my life so much differently, you know, and it was like a call to action for me to go back out there and leave it all on the field. And I also, you know, and as, as I was just turning to walk away in the distance, I saw levels. He was like on the, the entry level, but there was levels and every level was higher, right? And the higher it got, the more beautiful it was. And I believe there's levels in heaven, right? You know, I, I believe they, they need street sweepers in heaven too, right? You know, you, you know what I'm saying? How we live our life on this earth sets us up. So I just remember, you know, when, when I, I reflect on that dream so often because when I want to settle, when I want to stop, I think, man, I, I got to step out. I got to go for more. God has more. This is not it, right? As long as we're on this side of eternity, there's more for you. Whatever is not good in your life right now is not from God. And as long as we are here, we have the opportunity to overcome these things. You know, so we, we step into these things. And, you know, you think of life. Life is very much, you know, seasons, right? I'm from Connecticut, and we had seasons, right? And particular season, there'd be this, like this, this liquid stuff that would fall from the sky and this white, fluffy stuff. 
Um, I know you don't know anything about that out here, but snow, snow, yeah, that's snow. <laughs> but, um, you, know, you know, different seasons, and there was always, you could feel the transition. You could feel when you're shifting, and even within seasons, there's a lot of, you know, shifting. There's a lot of stepping out, whether it's, you know, you're a single person and you're going to be stepping into a season of marriage or you're a married couple stepping into a season of having children or stepping out from being an employee to a starting a business or even stepping out of an addiction, stepping out of an unhealthy mindset that you know is not serving you. God is challenging us to step out. So I want to touch on three things. And these are, you know, a couple weeks ago, I was just praying, praying in the bathroom in the morning and brushing my teeth and a lot of times I just see words in my head like God will flash words and he, the three words which I believe really are the are the keys or at least they're they're walking me through this season of stepping out for more is to compete to cheat and to swim it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay I promise but let, let me unpack this for a minute so you know, the Bible says in Matthew uh, 23, 11, actually, I believe if you guys could pull that up on the, oh, I like that image. Nice, nice. But he who is the greatest among you will be the ser- will, shall be your servant. And those that exalt themselves will be humbled. But those who humble themselves will be exalted. And I, I, see, I see these first two points as competing and cheating kind of as prerequisites uh, to the third one. We end at 7.30, right? Better get moving. All right. So as Christians, we are never, and we are at our best when we are serving and when, when we are giving. You know, my, my wife and I, Claudia, if you ask us how we define marriage, just the definition that God gave us is two people competing to outserve each other. And, you know, that, that obviously, I mean, you know, they say finances breaks up marriages. They say, you know, just, um, you know, having kids, all these different things. But I, I really believe the number one thing that tears apart marriages is selfishness. You know, because you could talk about, all right, well, you know, my she needs a lot of communication. I don't, but if you're thinking of her, you're gonna communicate, right? You know, you know the, 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 these type of things. And, and, and obviously this, this applies beyond marriage, any relationships, you know, the more that we can serve it in this season, you know, God is challenged to be Jeff serve. I, and I feel like I'm getting my serve back. There's even some people that, that I've worked with and worked for that just haven't been the best to me over these last year. And God is serve of Jeff, serve him, love him, you know, be an example, you know, and cause that's what Jesus came to do, you know? And I also feel that uh, I'll save all the prayers now for the end, but I feel I feel like there's people here that, you know, you've been coming to Awaken for a good, you know, three, six months now, uh, but you haven't, you know, jumped in. You haven't, you know, connected. You haven't plugged in. And, man, let, let me tell you, I, w- I was in your seat for probably the first six months. Claudia and I came here as well. And when we just stepped into serving somewhere, you know, serving here in the church, it just unlocks it because we all want to know why God placed us on this earth. We all want deep down to fulfill the purpose that he, he gave us. And the number one way to do that is to serve a vision bigger than yourself. You know, don't rent Pastor Jurgen's vision. Own it. Become a part of it. Make it yours. You know, and as you, as you make it your own, then God begins to reveal things in you and, and show you specific things and where he wants to place you. But serve, right? So I'm, 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 I'm going to move on. But serving is giving. Everything that Pastor Dana said about sowing money, when we serve others, it's the same principle. It's the same. We're, we're planting, right? I was, we were in Connecticut recently, and I, I love Claudia's dad. He's just one of the coolest dudes in the world, but he's got all these fig trees, and he's always growing stuff and you know, inventing stuff, but he's out there watering a little avocado tree, and, and it's like this big, and he's telling me about it. I'm like, my dad, but you know, like it doesn't bear fruit for eight years. And uh, he's like, eight, 10, 12, I don't know, but if you don't plant it, you're not going to eat it, you know? And we're not going to eat of the vision that God has for our life. We're not going to eat of the purpose unless we plant ourselves in the house of God. And we just start sowing through serving. So compete. Cheat is number two. 
So, Chi, this might sound a little corny, but uh, Matthew 6.33, seek first uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And this is just the way. Don't blame me. This is the way God spoke it to me. But it's <laughs> cheat on your spouse. Cheat on your job. Cheat on your kids with Jesus, with his presence, making him the number one priority in your life. You know? And, you know, I, I've gone through seasons in my walk with God where I came out of the gates on fire. First six months, I mean, me and my buddy led 60-something people to Christ and we're baptizing and all of the, you know, these different things. And then, you know, then I, I go through seasons where, you know, I'm not as connected. I'm not, you know, as, as plugged in. But I know God is challenging me to do that because everything good in life will come out of that. Coming to church, being here tonight is awesome. And we should continue to do that. But think about if you only ate, you know, two meals a week, Sunday and, you know, Wednesday night and maybe, you know, Tuesday morning prayer, right? Physically, it's, it's the same principle, right? You know, it's just learning to get into his presence, you know? And Pastor Colin challenged me recently to do a challenge with him just to really up our game, press in the God more and other things, you know, that we're doing. And I would challenge you with that tonight press into him because he has amazing amazing things waiting for you evan you're such a servant man you're such a boss i i love this guy man i love this evan stand up oh man <laughs> oh, can I, is this legal can i go down here Man, this, this guy is such a servant, man, um, him and, and his wife. And actually, you stand up, too. And I, I, I just want to pray over them and pray, pray a blessing. God, I just thank you for these two, God. I thank you, God, for, for lifting them up from where they were and planting them uh, here at Awaken. And, and it, just the scripture that comes to mind, guys, is that, you know, all things work together for the good for those who are called according to his purpose. And, 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 you know, there, there is, you're, you're stepping into, you know, as a Kairos moment, so to speak, you're stepping into where all the experience that you've had in the past, all of the, you know, just the, on the marketplace side and on the ministry side and uh, just some things that, you, you know, you've, you've been passionate about, it's all going to be coming together in this next season. It's all going to be coming together in this next season. I just see like, like a, a bow and arrow just being stretched back and it's still pulling back. And I just see over the next six months, it can, you know, continuing to tick back, uh, but then it's gonna be released. And all the different talents, all the different relationships, the resources are just gonna come together. And I just see that arrow being released and just piercing darkness. Just, you're gonna cause the enemy some real issues, some real problems. It's like when you think of Pastor Quacha, you know, and the devil man, oh sh man. She woke up again. It's like, it's going to be like that type of thing with you guys. God, I just pray over their marriage. I pray over their family, God. I pray a new level of unity, Lord, and just a new binding together. Because the call that God has on your life is not just for you, it's for your family. That same anointing is going to run through even generations beyond you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you guys. So we cheat and then we swim. And Pastor Leanne spoke a word a few weeks ago about, you know, she said, I believe, you know, most people walk away from God. Most people leave the church because they never experience swimming into the deep waters of faith. You know, and she used the analogy of like, you know, just, we, you know, a lot of times Christians will sit in the, the kiddie end of the pool, right? With our floaties on and all the kids are peeing around us, right? And, but, 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 but we never go out into those deep waters. But the, but, the, but the thing is this, you know, God has created us to live by faith. And in Hebrews 11.6, uh, I believe you guys have that one too, 11.6, it says it's simply impossible to please God without faith. It, it's, it's simply impossible. That's how we're created uh, to operate in. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For who uh, comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, uh, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently or earnestly uh, seek him. 
but we're created to live in faith. And, you know, I remember Pastor Jurgen, my wife and I, we had a, a, an opportunity a, a while ago, potentially, we're looking at moving back to Connecticut and, and operating a church there, and it, it's not happening. This is our home. But I remember, I remember, you know, talking to Pastor Jurgen about building a church, you know, and he said, it's very simple, Jeff. He says, you sleep with your own wife, you spend your own money, and you're always buying buildings. You're now, it, it, because you're always, and, and what the building represents, stretching for something that you cannot do on your own, you know? And, and the thing is this, is I don't, I don't believe that God, I mean, we're always 100% dependent on God. We should be. He is our source. But there's certain areas of my life, in your life, you can think back at one time you cried out to God for help right? And for, you know, I remember when I got into real estate and, oh, it, it was so exciting, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And every single house I'm looking at, I'm praying to God and I'm listening, you know, and all of that. But I believe, you know, as we grow and as we mature, the Bible says he's given us the mind of Christ to where a lot of times you, you don't, in certain areas, you, may, you don't need an ex external word. He's matured you in that area. You're starting to think like him, you know, and you can make, you know, d decisions on your own. So we, we have these certain areas. It's like when, when, before I got married, I thought like I finally had the single life kind of figured out. And I went, in, went into marriage thinking, oh man, I got this all together now. And then I get married. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I don't know how to be a husband. I, you know, all, all of these, you know, different things. Same thing when the kids, you know, when, when the kids came along. But so we have these areas, you know, and you could, uh, if you, you kind of section off your life, you have these areas where you're op you operate in the, in the gifts that he's built in you. Yeah. But what are the areas that you just can't do on your own? And, you know, in, in, in 2007, uh, in 2007, you know, I, I lost my business. I've shared this before. Um, you know, a, a larger real estate deal, lost everything and went bankrupt and, we were just married and moved in with my dad. It was horrible. It was horrible. And since that time, you know, I've, I've got, God, I, I said, I God, I know you've called me to real estate. I'm not giving up. And I went back in and he's restored everything I lost. And then some, um, I've invested in private properties in 10 different States across the country now, but I've never bought my primary home again. Well, in 2007, when we went bankrupt, I, I lost it. Uh, the bank took it from us. We, you know, we had to short sale it. And the, the trauma of that was, it, I, I just really never let go of it. And I would, I would say these things, and I believe this, but you know, I, I, we, you know, for six years now, rented a really nice house in PB, and I love it there. And, um, but oh no, I don't believe in owning your own home. And, you know, it's not an asset, it's not making your money. I believe those things are true, but I understand there's an importance to, you know, owning a home for your family and different things like that. But even though I believe that, for me, it was, it was a cover up that I knew God wanted me to do this, but I don't, God, God, I believed you for that house in Connecticut. God, I believed you for that business I was building. I used to go around telling everybody, I'm called to finance the kingdom, and, and then I lost it. So, I, I learned to trust God in, in, in all these other areas, but that area was off limits, God, because I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could trust you with that again. And, but you know, you, you hang around here at Awaken, it's all take it territory, right? I mean, I mean, every other sermon is about something. I mean, I, I love Pastor Collins, like, gotta get a house, buy the house, buy the house, all these, these things. And, and just kind of, you know, and, but, uh, but I started feeling like, you know, God really wants us to do this. And, um, but it scares, even as I stand here tonight, I'm scared, but we're doing it. Yeah. We're, and, thank you, thank you. And, and see, the thing is, stepping out into faith, it's not about waiting for the fear to dissipate. Because, you know, a, a lot of people will say, well, you, you're either in fear or you're in faith. And I, I believe fear and faith co can coexist, but only one is going to dominate. And, 
So, so, so we, we went out, we started looking at homes and, you know, everybody knows the, the market in, in San Diego, it's a seller's market, you know, probably one of the worst times to try to buy a house and all of these different things, you know, working against us, people are throwing their minds out, offering hundred grand, 200 grand over asking, all of these things. And um, so we go into this one house and um, the, the owner was there. Her name was Annie and she's 79. Her husband passed away recently. And, um, you know, we go in, we say hello and I'm kind of walking the house with my girls and, and, and I noticed my wife's not with us. And, you know, I'm like, where did that Claudia go? You know, so I go back in and she's praying over the lady and the lady's crying and she's just comforting her. Her husband passed away, right? So we make an offer on this property below asking price. And um, the agent calls us. He says, we got your offer below asking this other one. It was like 40 or 50,000 over asking with escalation clause or whatever. And um, he said, would you be willing to go up on your offer? I'm like, I don't know. Let me talk to my wife and I'll call you back. And before I called him back, he called us back. And he's just like, look, the, you know, Annie feels a special connection with your wife and would prefer to sell you the house. She just wants you to come up to the asking price, what she was asking, you know? So I'm like, wow, you know, so we, we, we did. And then we go on and we do some inspections. It's a rehab, we have to renovate the house, but there's, you know, some stuff that came up. So. I'm scared. Like, I'm just like, God, I'm, I'm getting out of this. Like, I, I'm, I'm getting out of this thing. I am not buying this house. And, you know, so, so I go back and I'm just like, all right, well, you know, based on the inspection, the appraisal, all, you know, I'm just throw, throwing all this stuff. I'm like, we'll buy the house, but only, you know, only at, you know, 50 grand below where we were. And they came back and they, they basically brought it like almost all, all the way down to what we asked. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So, you know, so, so, the, so then we, then we go, you know, we go and I'm, I'm a veteran, I'm a VA, you know, a uh, um, Navy guy. And, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, Pastor Jeff Forbes, you know, I have, uh, I had some injuries I got in the military and he's like, he's like, dude, you should just apply for, you know, disability. The mil they could, you know, help you out with different things. So we apply for some stuff in January and, um, you know, I, 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 ne I never hear back or anything. I get a couple letters and I, I scan them. It's like denied, denied and all this stuff. And, um, but then was it yesterday? So yesterday I, I, I get a, you know, a package in the mail and it basically says, congratulations, you're 20% disabled. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, all right. I'm like, well, I'm like, well, what does that mean? And, uh, you know, what, what, what it means is, you know, I, they, they're going to pay us like 300 bucks a month for the rest of my life. But we're buying the house with a VA loan. In the VA loan, there's these funding fees. In our case, it was 22000 but not if you're disabled. So now, bam, another 22000 you know, all, off the house. Praise God. But going back to what, what I started with, you know, that right now, that is my challenge. You know, I, I, I feel kind of like, kind of weird, you know, oh man, I'm afraid to buy a house. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real estate investor, you know. <laughs> you know, Pastor John gave me this great, you know, how awesome I am at real estate. And I'm like, I'm like terrified to buy a house, <laughs> you know. But, but you know, we, we heard from Dr. Brian a few weeks ago and he talked about the, you know, when you go through trauma, how it literally, yeah. you know, when, when you begin to go back into those areas, yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of lights up those areas of the brain. And it's just like, it's like, no, you don't do that, right? Yeah. So, but the thing is this, is, you know, the, the thing that motivates me in life more than anything else is, you know, I want to walk into heaven one day and I want to get that good done. Yeah. Good done, I'm saying it wrong, well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> I think I got a concussion on Saturday. Give me a break. Give me a break. I'm being serious. I want the well done. Who, want, who wants that? Who wants that? I mean, seriously. I mean, is that worth pressing through our fears for? Is that worth, you know, putting aside selfishness and turning your marriage into everything you know it could be? Is that worth, you know, fighting in prayer for the kids, you know, that, that have walked away from the faith? Yeah. Is that worth, you know, stepping out, yeah. you know, in swimming out into the deep waters? Because that, that's where, in the deep waters, that's where God can show off. Yeah. You know, and he wants to bring glory through your life. Yeah. Glory is just a manifestation of him. And he wants to 
we, we think about this. We are God's plan. The Bible says now through the church, yeah. the manifold wisdom of God will be made known. Yes. We are that. This world, this crazy world going on outside of there, we are the solution. It's not changing yeah. unless we change. We have to step out there. And, and, and I'll close with this. You know, Pastor Jurgen spoke uh, a, a couple days ago, but he was talking about his top takeaways from the Awaken Conference. He had three of them. But one of them is we have a responsibility to pass down the miracle mentality to the next generation. We have a responsibility to train and to wire our kids for faith. My daughter Ava even had her first vision about this new house, didn't you? You know, and I, I think at Emerge, one of the most impactful moments for me at Emerge was Pastor John and Becky's son prophesying over me. I mean, our kids are just growing. I mean, they're, 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 they're going to go so far beyond us. But whatever it is, I, I, I want to pray. First of all, first of all, let's do this. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. I'm a little bit over. But before we pray for what I just spoke about, it's impossible to please God without faith, right? Uh, it's impossible. But those who come to him first must first know that he exists. So I, I would be remiss not to take a moment and extend an invitation, you know, to anybody here tonight that maybe is questioning if he exists, you know, doesn't know, never really had a personal, you know, encounter, never really, you know, met him. You, you've been around religion. You heard about him, but you've never really met him. So with all eyes closed, and if you would bow your heads, please, I just want to invite you. If, you know, if that moment came, right, like, you know, just what I spoke about with my grandpa, and, you know, t today, you know today's the day. I don't, I'm not trying to be all doom and gloom on you. But are you confident, you know, where, where you're spending eternity? Maybe you've known him, but just like uh, the Israelites in the Bible, right, you've known him. You've, you've actually taken territory for him. You've done great things with him, but you, you kind of faded away. You walked away a little bit, become a little lukewarm. I just want to pray for those two categories, and, and then we'll wrap it up. So if that's you, just without hesitation, I just want you to lift your hand so I can include you in your prayer. Thank you. God bless 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 you. Thank you, sir. I see, see you a couple up in the back row. God bless you. God bless you as well. God bless you. Oh, thank you. God bless you guys. Wow. I appreciate your courage. I appreciate your boldness. And let's just, uh, all of us, if we could just join in on a, on a simple prayer. And it's a simple prayer, but very profound. Uh, I prayed this prayer on February 20th, 1999. And uh, man, it was a game changer. So let's pray this all together. Repeat it out loud after me. Lord Jesus. I acknowledge you. I need you. I believe that you died on a cross for me. That you rose from the dead. And I ask you right now to come into my heart, to come into my mind, to come into every area of my life and renew me. God, I thank you from this moment that you are my Father. Jesus is my Savior. And the Holy Spirit is about to become my best friend. God, I love you. Take this life and make it into what you've created it to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. And I, I just want to pray over, uh, you know, pray over everybody right now, just close out. Uh, Father, I just thank you for your people. God, I, I just pray, Lord God, that we would walk out of here with a renewed desire to walk in faith, Lord God. Your word says that is you that works within us to give us the desire and give us the power to carry out your plan. So God, I just pray an infusion of faith uh, into your people tonight. God, I pray over all those areas of traumas, the areas where 
they think they lost and are afraid to go back into. God, I just pray that you would call them out into the deep waters, Lord, that they would experience, God, dependency, complete dependency on you. And I thank you, God, that, that you are almighty, that you are all powerful, God, that there's nothing that you can't do, Lord. So I thank you for this people of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.